What keeps you stuff. out there under those conditions? Hmm? What keeps you out there under those uncomfortable... Oh, the love of painting, the love of being outdoors, looking at nature, being with, you know, being with friends, too. That really makes a tremendous... I, got, I just go to this one place, uh, it, and it's not, you know, I live on a peninsula, and there are several bays around the peninsula, and I go to this one small bay where all the, uh, the crap floats in off the ocean, and... Uh, uh, you know, there are much more beautiful places, but uh, what you know, uh, what what's really interesting to me is the is the movement there. You know, the weather, the tide, uh, it's constantly appearing, you know, and disappearing. Uh, you know, the, suddenly the you know the bay is kind of naked and. And the mud's exposed, and then three hours later on, it's just gone. It's a, I hate it when the, when the sea comes in. Uh, you know, I just like all this, what it does. In, uh, it creates these tidal pools and rivulets, and, and the way the light kind of moves across it at different times of the day. And uh, so it's like a constant, you know, I like that movement. Uh, I like that it's not the same the next time I come back. And it never is, you know. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I watch it from when the light's on, the, coming from the east, and then I watch it all day and it moves the other side, you know, to, uh, on the west. And all these things are constantly, so it's... Uh, I find the change absolutely fascinating, you know. And I, 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 I sometimes I just have to walk away because it's boring, or something like that. And, and, but I know, like, if I, I can be 20 miles away, you know, doing some sort of stupid errand, and I know I've got to be back there because that's exactly the right moment, you know. Uh, so it, it, it's over the last 10 years, this small thing has been. Totally exciting, you know. And somehow to, to kind of make it concrete, to to touch it, to hold a little bit of it, is, I guess, what I'm trying to do. You know. And uh, I mean, people say it never looks like their own paint. And a friend of mine, a very good painter, it was asked that question about. But it doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like what I'm seeing. And his answer was, "Well, you weren't there the day I was there." <laughs> so, uh, uh, so it's it's mesmerising. It's it's uh, and you know, it's it's the place where I'm the expert. I know more about it than anyone else in the world. And that in itself is somehow extremely important, that uh, it's mine. I know more about it than anyone. And that, that for me is a, somehow important. Mm. One of a series I've done from my memory of uh a place called Popham Beach, south of Bath, in Maine, where there's a a very uh, when at low tide there's like a, a half a mile of beach that's opened up, and at high tide it's this rock is surrounded by the water, and um, and back beyond that there's a lighthouse at Popham Beach in Maine. In Maine. Uh, and Philosophy is really a big part of my artwork, and um, I grew up loving artwork, and then when I was in college, I really learned how to love and respect philosophy, and it was wonderful to live in a world of concepts and ideas, and it was wonderful to just think about relationships and how concepts related and how it all was part of our being and part of our acting and part of our living our everyday lives to that point. So 
there was really a moment in my studies towards the end, and I had a fantasy about going on and writing books and studying philosophy forever because I was just really seduced by, um, just really seduced by it. But something happened, and words just words just couldn't contain what I was trying to express when I was trying to respond to other things that I'd read or things that I was trying to make connections between. And it was like, I've heard it called a Dada moment, but it was just a spontaneous moment where um, I started adding image and marks and other kinds of ideas to the words. So that was the moment I think that I, I jumped off of the page so to speak. And at that same time, actually, I was studying with a, a professor at Washington University, William Gass, who had written this beautiful essay, and the title was, The Book is a Container of Consciousness. And that really inspired me at the time, and I really started seeing books and words as not a a fixed and lifeless thing, but it's something that was ready to engage, and it's something that had some level of consciousness. And, um, and really, that brings me to right now and my painting, and I see a painting as a container of consciousness, and the surface of the painting that has all of my marks, it's like a book that has all of these words. I like to observe nature because for me it's a way to see new things, to see color in a different way, to understand shapes, And, and colors and light as it changes and because it feels like an interesting reality it feels like something worth doing to me when I'm doing it I feel like it's something real for the moment and In a strange way, it sort of justifies the experience because there's a kind of beauty in it that is perfect. It's perfect for the moment and it's perfect It's perfect because you can never get it the same way again. Oh, you forget time completely. Yeah. And bugs. <laughs> what what's happening that you can actually forget the bugs? <laughs> I don't know, you come home all bitten up and you wonder, well, why didn't I slap at them? <laughs> you were too engrossed with what you were doing. Hey, your troubles, well, they just disappeared, you know. And you lose uh, time, you lose uh, presence, really. You're just there at that particular moment, whatever you're doing, at that particular hour. That's a is the, the kind of question what you don't know what's happening it's uh, it's this question when you're really painting you're not there you know, uh, you know you've walked you've walked away almost you know? and that's when you feel like it's 
No, no, that's not what you feel like. It's just, that's a fact. <laughs> it's, it's not a feeling. It's just, uh, you know, you're, you're very, you know, it's, it's like after the event, you look at it and say, wow, did I, did I do that? No. So what you're involved in it, you're painting, and, and when you walk away, something had transpired that... Well, not literally walked away, but you've, you've, you're out, you're, you're not there. It's... Uh, You know, Philip Guston says it really well, because he, he, he was asked the same question. And he said, well, when I start, and I'm not sure I'm quoting him right, but he basically said, when I start, there are three artists in the room with me. Uh, there's Peridella Francesco, Goya, and Rembrandt. And when I get into the painting, uh, you know, Peridella Francesco leaves the room. And when, I re and when I'm really starting to p really painting, Rembrandt leaves the room. He says, and eventually, when I'm really hot, you know, Goya, I'm not sure it was in this order, but Goya leaves the room. He says, but when I'm really painting, I leave the room. Does it just happen, you know, spontaneously? It has to happen spontaneously, but there has to be a measure of control. It's like, like a conversation you're having with anything, with anybody. Uh, just like our conversation, it, it goes, it meanders and, and uh, it touches on different things. And certain things are left unsaid because words can't be found. And just like in an image, uh, the image exists and your interpretation of it, of of whatever is physical is what art is all about. The interpretation, the expression that it draws out in you. Between when it's fun and not fun, and there's some, some kind of magnetic thing about it that happens. I guess I like it because when you sort of are making this kind of progress with it, you kind of forget time and space. You just become so absorbed in it that it's like entering another time zone with it. And it makes it I mean, it is a challenge getting there, I guess. It just kind of takes on a... special... A special kind of enjoyment with life, I think. It's called flow. It's like water. Can you stop water? Can you hold your hand up in a river and catch it? No. It all goes right through. And um, actually, my self-portrait, it says at the very, uh, that one, that's my artist statement, it says, um, for truth contained feels confined, and so it turns to sand. Upon billions, upon billions of destroyed truths, the infinite ocean crashes. And that's how it is. I think the greatest irony, and it's almost like a sick joke about flow, is that you can define it. The moment you start trying to define it, I think it eludes you. I think you can only be it. And when you, talk to, when you feel like you have f experienced that, and you talk to somebody else who feels like they experience, have experienced that, then the two of you can relate about that. And if you're collaborating or whatever, even conversation, that's the dialectic. Conversation can go to that state of flow. But the moment it's quantified and 
it, be, it becomes pejorative almost. It goes from sacred to, and that's, that's the game. And one of the theories that we've had about Hegel's phenomenology, where he wrote like 400 brilliant pages trying to discuss this exact same thing. And you could spend 10 years reading it every day for an hour and not get it or get it. Cause it's, and he got so close to it. But one of the jokes is it's as if he himself believed that he did it. And after he wrote it, he thought it was done. He thought that like he changed history and like he quantified it. Okay. But no, it was done. And he didn't have that footnote for the whole book that said, well, you know, this is just a working model for one instant. <laughs> you've got to recreate this for yourself or you've got to be trying to find this state or work to continually uphold the state or inspire the state in others in, you know, the best way. And